Morrison, Tennessee. Where does it hurt? It hurts in both TM joints, uh, both masseters, yeah. both tem temporalis area, and yeah. then the headache goes with it. And, I'm and the and the neck. And the neck as well. You're always sore in the neck. Mm -hmm. How long has that been going on? Since May of 2011. How many doctors have you seen? You're number 43. I've seen, den of course, dentists, oral surgeons, neurologists, uh, physical therapists, chiropractors. Uh, I've been checked for Lyme disease. I've been checked for rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, you name it. Did they ever come up with a diagnosis? Never have. They, they, they would throw things at me. Like with Botox, a, for example. With Like Botox or bite splints mm -hmm. without having a proper diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And I would have to go through that. And then I would end up disappointed after, you know, a year or two years of that treatment. We ran you through the neural occlusion screening uh, yesterday. We looked at CT, MRI, um, all kinds of gadgetry computerized metrics. We were trying to figure out, we're trying to measure your joints, trying to figure out what was going on in the joints themselves. They're like hinges. And then we were trying to figure out what was going on with your bite. And then at the end of the appointment, we decided to pull out um, diagnostic nerve blocks, right? So we stuck a needle in your neck uh, superficially. There's a nerve that traverses there. And we used anesthetic to numb things temporarily, right? Can you tell us about that? What did that do? The pain went the worst pain that I was having was in the, the joint, the TM joints themselves. Yeah. I would say they were about an 8 out of a 10 on uh -huh. both sides. And it dropped them down to about a 2. And I was good for about 10 hours. So you had a nice release for... It, it was a dramatic release. Okay. So because it was a temporary nerve block and anesthetic wears off, you know, it didn't fix anything. Sure. But, it, but, but, but it, it showed that those nerves are responsible for firing the pain. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, that's what I, it was telling me. That's exactly right. For me, seven years of chronic pain every, yeah. every day, yeah. six or above out of 10, Yeah. this is great. Yeah. So, I don't know, and again, we don't know how, it's gonna, how long it's gonna last. It's not gonna last, I unfortunately. Could, I could get halfway back to Tennessee and it'd be raging Eight yep. or nine. Yep. But you're leaving knowing more than you did when you got here. Absolutely. I'm leaving here with more tools in my tool belt. So who you need to see is someone that's an expert in the upper C-spine, cervical spine. And you also need to see um, a TMJ surgeon just to have them evaluate and make sure that a big part of your problem, you actually have problems, that's causing your pain is not coming from the torn up joints because we know you have torn up joints. We saw that. You were Piper 3A on, on your left side and you were a Piper 4AB on your right side, mm -hmm. definitively. So Piper 1s would mean perfect, healthy discs and joints. They're not Piper 1s, they're torn. And again, the first doctor to really go in depth with an MRI. Yeah, you never even had showing, one of those. Showing the, the disc. Yeah. Not just an x-ray where you can't see the disc because it only picks up, what you, you said, it only picks up calcium? Yep. Well, the, yeah, the normal x-rays and the CTs, all they look at is calcium. The MRIs look at hydrogen ions, and hydrogen, hydrogen, water has hydrogen. So does blood. Most of the tissues in the body, the soft tissues, have hydrogen. The eyeballs. Oh, yeah. Oh, the brain. You know, it's like, so... You can't see those things on x-ray because there's no calcium. So if a dentist or a physician is only looking with an x-ray or a CT or a chiropractor, for example, you know, you're not seeing the soft tissue. And the relevance here is that the disc itself, which is soft tissue, which it's kind of like cartilage that lays between your, like in your ACL, right? The people tear those ligaments. Well, you've got ligaments holding cartilage on top of your jawbone. And the MRI lets us see that and lets us see if it's healthy or not. It made more sense to me because I've been through so many doctors. Yeah, you already had an idea of the anatomy. I, I had an idea of the anatomy. Yeah. And when you started rattling off these terms and showing me, now the MRI, that was brand new to me. Yeah. Because no one before you had done that. 
I was blown away when I, when I looked at the, especially the right, the right side, the disc. And you can see it. We mm -hmm. pointed it out, that little bow tie, right? It, it doesn't make sense spending monies on that. I think we're chasing something minor. I think yours, you know, you need to, we can always go back and chase it later, but I think you should get evaluated by this, uh, the TMJ it makes, it makes sense. Based on your MRI and your CT and stuff and the TMJ damage, I know that you had trauma. You had damage. Can you tell us what happened? When I was a freshman in college, I was playing, we were playing a, uh, a softball game, scrimmage. Yeah. And uh, I was playing catcher. And one of the guys on the team, on the opposite, the opposing team, he was taking things a little too serious. Mm -hmm. And he was, the ball was hitting the outfield. He was coming home and they threw it to me and I was gonna tag him out. And he lowered his shoulder and just completely, he, and he, he was 250 pounds and I weigh- Big I, guy. 170, I weigh 170, he's 250. Yeah. And I, he, he lowered his shoulder and hit me right there. There's a scar there, isn't there? There's a scar. He busted me wide open. Yep. And I went end over end, and I, I was dizzy. Stood up. There's blood everywhere. But it was such a violent blow. Yep. To my, your mandible. To my mandible, and I'm sure it not only did it affect my my hinges, my jaw hinges, the TM joints, but my neck as well. Yeah. That's probably exactly what tore the ligaments that hold your cartilage in place, both in your TM joint and in your upper C-spine. And that's probably at least one of the factors as to why you're even here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it sucks. You know, it's, it's damage. Just like the first, per the first specialist I saw yeah. after my local dentist. Yeah. He was a TMJ specialist in Nashville. Yeah. And the first thing he said, but just... Uh, Solely because I was clicking. Mm -hmm. He said he stopped her clicking. He said, we're going to put you in phase one. Mm -hmm. What he called phase one. Yeah. Bite splint. Change my bite. And he pulled your jaw forwards with a splint. Wear it 24 hours for two years. Yeah, and you told me that you were wearing it uh, constantly. You were figuring out ways to make sure your teeth didn't touch, right? Well, he, he told me, he said, make sure your top and your bottom teeth do not touch. Yeah. You, you're going to have to learn to... Eat with it, sleep with it, talk with it, and I would go. I would go back to see him every two weeks, and he would give me injections in both TM joints. Prolotherapy. Uh, prolotherapy uh, injections in the masseters. He would give me one up inside of the roof of my mouth, and uh, he would have the same question every every visit. What was the question? He would say. Are you wearing your splint like you're supposed to? And yeah. I'm, of course I am. He's, yeah. he's, I don't understand why you're not getting better. Yeah. And I, and I would always say, I'm getting worse. I'm hurting worse. Yeah. And at the end of the two year ordeal, after numerous, countless visits of us saying the same thing to each other, I don't know why you're not getting better. I'm hurting worse. He said, we might as well just take the splint out. Okay. And, and then I said, I said, Doc, how, now that you've moved, uh, you've totally changed my bite with this bite splint. Which is supposed to be reversible, remember? <laughs> which is supposed to be totally, you know, a yeah. quick reverse. Uh -huh. So he, he bulldogged my, my mandible out, changed my bite. Yeah. And I said, Doc, how long do you think it'll take my bite to go back to a natural overbite? And he said, probably two weeks. It took a year, which was painful itself. Yeah. I had to learn how to eat like that. Yeah. You know? With your jaw sticking forward, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just chewing, nice. chewing with my front teeth. Nice. Yeah. So Did the popping and clicking stop? The, the popping Throughout. and clicking stop, but that was meaningless. Yeah, well, let me t actually know it's... Technically, that was actually a bad thing because the popping and clicking meant that your bone, your mandible, condylar head of your mandible was snapping up underneath the cartilage every now and then snapping off. That was the pop and the click. 
What he did was with his splint is he actually had you pop that disc even further out to where you no longer had any protection. The whole point of the disc is to protect the bone from rubbing bone. You, you had some protection. Right. And the popping and clicking stopped because of what he did with the splint. And that technically so orthopedically made he, you worse. He, he opened it up too much. Orthopedically, that made you worse. He specialized in prolotherapy. That's all he did. Mm -hmm. And he charged me 700 bucks. And he said, I guarantee you I'll fix you. And he gave me 100 injections in the head, neck, and back mm -hmm. in one sitting. 100 injections? And it did absolutely nothing but yeah. make me sore. <laughs> Real sore. Nice. But he guaranteed me. Yeah. Did he give you your money back? <laughs> absolutely not. If I would heard about Dr. Nick earlier, if I just saw uh, one of his videos earlier, then I would have been out here earlier. To get an opinion. I have spent over twenty thousand hmm. dollars on trying to get this fixed, hmm. or just trying to figure out what the hell. Trying wrong. to figure out, trying to get a diagnosis, a proper diagnosis. Yeah. And it's just, I can't imagine what, just looking at your map out there, uh, how the pe people come from all over the world and from South Africa, Australia, yeah. people out there being led down wrong paths by doctors or dentists that don't know what they're doing. Some of them are trying, but some, most of them are fed a recipe. And the reality is everyone's got a different problem, a different set of problems, and you have to come at it from a, it can't be dogmatic. You have to use science, and you have to measure. You know, the whole point of the teaching organization that I've formed, uh, our motto is measured matters. You can't, if you can't measure it, it doesn't matter. If you can measure it, let's figure out how it matters, what makes it, what, what does this mean? So this person had this number, this person had that number. You, over time, you know, you use sound science, you start seeing patterns, and all of a sudden it becomes science, it becomes fact, not opinion. Glad you came? Absolutely. All right, cool. Well, thank you very much.